I don't know how to explain that pain. It's just a, a stifled scream. <laughs> I felt like I had a wildfire, like there was a wildfire radiating around from the center of my lower back. And eventually, uh, and shortly, then the pain went down my legs. Sometimes you come on and build spasms. And there are times when the spasms were just so painful that I would fall or drop things. I think the most problematic thing of all was being able to sit very, very hard. I started eating standing up. You just can't walk because your ankle hurts so much. Or, and at night, you can't sleep because the pain is there. I mean, it, uh, and then when you fix it, both legs, then you're really in a bind. My scenario with my back pain, I was not able to really do anything. Hello, my name is Verony Huynh Hillard. I'm an attending neurosurgeon at University of Washington Medical Center. Welcome to Talk Medicine. Today's topic is a discussion on lumbar stenosis. Joining me today is Dr. Trent Treadway, who is uh, a fellowship trained neurosurgeon in spine, specializing in minimally invasive. I myself also do minimally invasive. I'm trained in minimally invasive as well as some complex spine surgery. We're bringing in two of Dr. Treadway's patients who both have lumbar stenosis, very similar diagnosis. And uh, we want to show how they're treated differently based on what their problem is. So Dr. Treadway, welcome. Thank you. Uh, today our topic is lumbar stenosis. Would you tell us a little bit about uh, lumbar stenosis? Sure. Well, lumbar stenosis, uh, basically stenosis means narrowing of a canal or um, a tube. And in this case, this is narrowing of the spinal canal. And as you see on this model we have here, this is the actual dura with the nerve roots in them. You can see the nerve roots off to the side. This is what we call the spinous process in the lamina. After we get a little bit older, what happens is we start to have degenerative changes happen. And the facet joints in this area here, as well as the ligament underneath, becomes a little bit larger and starts to compress the actual nerve roots that are coming out. By doing this, it actually causes pain. People can present with some pain that goes down their leg. They can present with numbness and tingling. And that's usually the syndrome that we call intermittent uh, claudication or spinal stenosis. So classically, these patients with lumbar stenosis uh, tells you that they used to be able to walk five, ten blocks with no problem and more lately after walking a block they start to get pain ra radiating down the back of their leg. They would have to bend over to relieve that pain or sit down and that's a pretty classic presentation. So what can we do for lumbar stenosis? Traditionally we can do a big open operation but both of us are minimally invasive spine surgeons, so what is a minimally invasive technique to treat that? The first thing for uh, patients that have lumbar stenosis is uh, we try to maintain them on conservative therapy, meaning uh, right. physical therapy, epidural steroid injections, and uh, sometimes that works very well. Uh, when it doesn't work, then we have to think about some surgical options. And uh, traditionally, the, the surgical options included an open decompressive laminectomy. Now what that means is we'd make a midline incision, we'd spread the, the muscles, we'd take off the spinous process and the lamina, and also some of the, the ligament that's compressing the actual nerve roots. Um, by doing that, uh, people would actually do fairly well, the nerve roots would be decompressed, their symptoms would get better. More recently, uh, surgery has changed to more minimally invasive approaches, meaning that we can do uh, the same type of procedure through smaller incisions, with less damage to the surrounding tissue, as well as less blood loss, and purportedly people going home a little bit quicker with better results. So that's uh, what we kind of do at this, at this stage in the game. Right, so the thought is to decrease the amount of post-operative pain for a patient because we're not violating the muscle as we would do with traditional open surgery. Well, joining us today is Ms. June Ogawa. Welcome, June. Would you tell us a little bit about how you presented to Dr. Treadway and what was bothering you at the time? Well, I went to uh, visit my son in Kansas City and uh, I was having a little bit of pain, the, 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 the sciatica at that time. Mm -hmm. But after the plane ride, when we landed, I had such a difficult time uh, getting off the plane mm -hmm. that you know, but I had to have my husband help me and I had to hold on to things. So we got a wheelchair. It's so painful. I was in the basement of my son's home, 
to Kansas City, I fell backward because of a spasm that comes out. And the odd thing, it wasn't my back, it was down my legs all the time, and especially the right leg, the right ankle. Did you have any shooting pain or numbness and tingling down that leg? Especially in my right ankle, but it was down the uh, front of my shin. Okay. And on the arch area and the toes. And uh, it was, uh, gosh, the pain was so bad. You know, it, what it is, is like a spasm. You feel like screaming, but you, you don't want to scream. <laughs> right. Sounds pretty bad. So, Dr. Treadway, to me, Ms. Ogawa sounds like she has some nerve impingement sim uh, symptoms, some radiculopathy. Um, what, what was your thoughts at the time when you first met her? Well, uh, when I first met June, uh, she came to me and uh, she'd actually had a fall at the same time. Uh, actually, it was, I think she had a fall about a year and a half before. Is that what it uh, was? But I kept falling because my foot was dragging. Right. Right. I she, didn't know that. She had a little bit of a foot drop, and uh, she'd, she'd had a couple falls. And uh, on one of the falls, because she has some osteoporosis, which is just uh, uh, decreased uh, bone matter here as we get a little bit older. And this is a CT myelogram of uh, Miss Ogawa here. And uh, what, was, uh, what was impressive is that she had a compression fracture down here at L5. And she'd been seen by uh, a number of uh, folks, and uh, I believe that uh, they thought a lot of that uh, was causing her pain. But uh, sitting, down to, sitting down with her and talking to her, a lot of her pain was more of a nerve root pain and not necessarily back pain. And uh, therefore, we did a few more tests here at the University of Washington Medical Center, including an EMG. Now, an EMG is where we put the little needles in your, in your, mm -hmm. in your arms and legs, and we tested the conductivity and wanted to make sure what nerve roots were involved. And that actually uh, led us to show that uh, there were two nerve roots involved. And in this model, we had the L5 and L4 nerve roots that were involved. So it's interesting because on that CT myelogram, it shows that osteoporotic fracture, but that didn't, that wasn't the cause of her problem. No, it seemed like she had more pain that was going down her legs, and uh, she had what we call foraminal stenosis, which is out more lateral. And that's in this region right here, pinching the nerve roots. So that's, that's basically what, what her symptoms were. That's why she had the pain. And I think that a number of people could look at these imaging studies and, and suggest maybe a bigger, larger surgery, but right. uh, as even the older at, we get. At L5-S1, it looks like she might even have a slip or a spondylolisthesis there uh, that some people would think she would require a fusion. But in her case, it was a little different. Correct? Yeah, because she didn't have much back pain at all, and it was more of the L4 and L5 nerve root. Um, we were able to come up with a plan for surgery which involved a minimally invasive approach and uh, not lead her to stay in the hospital for very long and have a larger, uh, a potentially more dangerous and more complicated surgery. So could you show us uh, what you chose to do for June? Sure. Here's a model of the spine, and uh, basically she had uh, the two levels that were involved were called L3-4 and L4-5. And uh, with this uh, retractor, what we did is we made, a, made a, an approach to the spine off the midline, and we actually docked right down on the lamina and what we call the facet joint. And we were able to actually mo remove the bone and the ligament and free up the nerve roots that were being impinged. And by doing so, that should give her relief of her pain that was going down in her legs in what we call the L4 and L5 distribution. Great. <clears throat> so we have a video to show what we did for a patient who had lumbar stenosis. So the video starts off looking through a camera through this tubular retractor, which is only about 18 millimeters in diameter. And the video right now shows the drilling of the lamina, which is in this region here. And as we drill this region, what it does is it opens up the ability to get to the foramen and do a decompression of the foramen, which in your case was a nerve being pinched. At this point, you can see that the carousin is performing the, the rest of the laminectomy. And the curette here is taking down the ligament and flavum, which can be compressive as well. There's a pituitary rounder taking down the ligaments, performing the foramenotomy, and you can see that the thecal sac is exposed, therefore we've performed a good decompression for the central stenosis as well as the foraminal stenosis. So after the operation, how did you feel? Oh, I moved my legs in bed, no pain. But then I felt my, uh, you know, it was felt sort of numb. The numbness was gone. Great. So when I had to use the restroom, I noticed I could walk and my foot didn't drag. 
And I noticed I could lift it. it before I couldn't. It just stayed flat, and I, I had to tell, move, move, but it wouldn't move. So it's pretty dramatic in terms of uh -huh. your improvement. And, you know, walking was no problem, too. So, well, doctor it discharged me that night. He went home that evening. Uh, right? That evening. And we got home at 8 o'clock. I walked for about an hour. Oh, it felt so good to walk without pain. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yeah, June, June had a nice, a nice result, and uh, I, I know that when she comes back and her and her husband come back to my clinic and we were doing follow-ups, she was doing real well, and it uh, was very impressive. I got a nice letter from her one day, and I opened it up, and I saw a picture of her and her family on Mount Rainier, and I'm like, if she can climb Mount Rainier, that's pretty impressive, so. <laughs> so you climbed Mount Rainier. Oh, yes. That's pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Yeah. And how long now since your surgery? Two years. So you've had two years of no pain with walking. Uh-huh. It's only, you know, I, I rarely, rarely take a pain maybe once a month. Probably just aspirin would do it. <laughs> That's great. Is there anything else you would like to say? I'm very thankful for this procedure because even the surgery, you know, after surgery it was painless. I mean, my surgical site. Right. So that's one of the reasons why we do our minimal invasive. You can go home that same night. Well, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing your story. It was great to hear. And uh, we actually have a video of you after your surgery. I like to go for walks because that helps. And uh, I like to go to the gym and do the weights. I pull weeds, I do yard work. And we've been spending a lot of time just traveling from one family to the next and I've been babysitting and you know, I think it helped make my legs and everything stronger. Climbing the stairs, carrying the babies. I think I was depressed with the pain, but now I feel so free. When I walk, I look at the plants and I look at the flowers, the seasons changing, and uh, feel all the cool breeze, and it's beautiful. And today the air is so nice. You know, the sun shining, it just feels wonderful to be out here. Good to be alive. <laughs> Joining us is Robin DiGiorgio, who also had lumbar stenosis from a different cause. And in her case, we did a minimally invasive decompression as well as a fusion. Welcome, Robin. Thank you. How are you feeling? Just fine, thank you. Would you tell me a little bit about how you presented to Dr. Treadway? What was your problem at the time? I was experiencing uh, an enormous amount of back pain. Uh, felt kind of like a wildfire that was burning, coming around my body from my back. And then I had pain going down both legs. And the thing that was interesting to me um, was that the pain in each leg was different. The pain that was in my right leg was um, shooting pain that went down into my foot. And the pain that was on my left leg was in a way like pins and needles. My leg was numb most of the time. And it was hard to walk. I couldn't really feel my feet very well. Uh, back pain was pretty severe though. Uh, I ended up basically standing or laying down. Sitting got to be pretty prohibitive. And that's how I was when I came to see Dr. Treadway. So Dr. Treadway, it sounds like Miss De Giorgio has both a back pain component as well as leg pain. That's correct. Uh, it was interesting when she came to me and she described both of these uh, symptoms and uh, we did an exam on her and she actually had L5 radiculopathies bilaterally which meant that her L5 nerve roots were being impinged. And if you take a look at the MRI that we have here, what we see is the L4-5 level in both of these images demonstrate that she has a slip forward or what we call a spondylolisthesis. So you were moved forward and what that does is it, it pinches the nerve roots down here. This is a nice image of your spinal cord coming down here. Here are the nerve roots coming down, and you can see that you have a block here. So what that was doing is pinching your nerve roots, giving you the pain down your leg, and at the same time, because you were moving forward, back and forth, on your vertebral bodies, causing you back pain. So the surgery that I thought would best fit her would be what we call a minimally invasive transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion. Wow. Now, once again, that's big a fancy words. word, big <laughs> words. Uh, but what that means is we come through a, a very small incision, take the tubular retractors down as we described earlier, 
and we actually take the bone off and also the ligament to decompress the nerve roots so that your pain going down your legs is improved. However, you also had a significant amount of back pain because you were moving back and forth. And in order to treat that, we need to do what we call a stabilization procedure. What was moving back and forth? Your vertebral bodies. They were rubbing back and forth on each other. So that's why you were getting a lot of back pain. I see. And so what we did was, once we got the decompression done, we went ahead and went into the, the, the actual disc space right here. We took the disc out and put a little graft inside there to make it a little bit larger. And then we put screws and rods in there to lock you down so you wouldn't move anymore. That's called a stabilization infusion procedure. How did you feel being offered the surgery? Well, Dr. Treadway had said to me that, um, he told me when I came in for my second visit that people come to him that think they need back surgery. They're referred to him. And that often people who, who come don't need the kind of surgery that he does or don't need back surgery. And you told me that your surgery, the surgery that he was an expertise in, was perfect for my problem. And he wanted me to go home and think about it. And so I did. I went back to Orcus and um, talked to my friends. And um, not one of my friends encouraged me to have this surgery. And there were lots of comments. Um, you know, after surgery, your body will never be the same. It's your back. You could end up being paralyzed and not able to walk, um, et cetera. Right. And it, probably what they're used to hearing is the traditional surgery, which is the big open operation where you do a lot of muscle retraction to get the operation done. But in this case, you were able to do this minimally invasive. Correct? Yes, uh, we were able to do it minimally invasively. I think more importantly, though, is uh, we were able to have a patient with significant findings, symptoms that matched her MRI, and we had a specific surgical procedure to treat her. And unfortunately, a lot of patients come to us that actually don't have uh, a surgical problem. Um, the patients that do have a surgical problem, then I think if we actually sit down with them, talk to them, do a good job on our diagnosis and also our treatment, we can have some really excellent outcomes. So, Every time I came in for my visit, I had my little notebook with me and I'd have a list of questions. And uh, Dr. Treadway got to the point where he'd walk in the door, hi, what are your questions? <laughs> you know, and, and then I would write down the answers. Um, it was really important to me to be clear about what was happening. And um, my, I had a friend come with me each time kind of like a patient advocate, and, and she had permission for me to ask questions as well in case she thought of something that I hadn't thought of. Right, and that's very important for it, two people to hear exactly what was said by right, the doctor. Right, and I felt comfortable with it by the time we were ready to do it. What did you do for Robin? And I actually have some intraoperative images of your case uh, that we took while you were asleep. This is the intraoperative image of Robin's spondylolisthesis, so you see the slip back here. These are your vertebral bodies that are moved forward on each other. Notice that the disc space right here is a lot smaller than it is at the level above. In the next image, what we've done is we've taken off the bone through this very small incision through the retractors. We've taken off the bone to allow us to get down and get into the disc space, remove the disc, put this inner body graft. These are little radio-opaque markers here that tell us exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have what we call bone morphogenic protein that we put in here to make sure that you have a nice fusion across here. And that, that bone, can you explain what that is? That sure, what that does is that will actually help facilitate the bone formation across that area because fusions are like concrete. We need to kind of set them and we need to, to let them fuse and get nice and hard. And by doing that, it's gonna, it's gonna create, it's gonna stop you from moving back and forth. So with that in mind, we have the inner body graft our bone morphogenic protein in here. Then in this image here, you see these K wires. These are very long wires that come down through a percutaneous uh, poke. We basically make a small incision, take the wires down, and because the screws actually have holes in them, we follow that track down, wow. put the screws in, and then we put the rod in, lock it down, and you can see that your reduction is, is pretty nice here, so you're moved back a little bit. You're a little bit taller with this inner body graft here. And this is just what we call the AP view, or looking at you forward, showing you the four screws that we have in and the rods that attach the two screws on each side with the inner body graft. So you're nice and stable at that point in time with the screws locking you down and making sure that you don't move anymore. And that was to treat your back pain. Mm -hmm. 
I have to say those are very nice placement of the pedicle screws there into L4 and L5 and also the interbody graft. That looks very good. How did you feel after the operation? Pretty phenomenal. No Great. pain. It was really amazing. Dr. Treadway had said that he would, if I didn't get up the, the day of the surgery, that he'd have me up and walking the next day. And did you walk the next day? I did indeed. And I was on pain meds, but it was pain free. Great. And it was pretty phenomenal. I had a hard time the last month and a half before the surgery. I just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And uh, I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to hold on until the surgery came. So it was a huge, dramatic shift from the surgery to before. It was really phenomenal. No, she did really well. Uh, she had a nice conservative management in the beginning, and uh, once that failed, uh, surgery was definitely an option. Uh, she did remarkably well, remarkably well with the surgery, and uh, it was always nice to have her come back for her post-op visits to see how she was doing. And one day, I remember she she basically uh, stopped me. I was getting ready to go see another patient. We'd kind of finished up, and she sat me down. She's like, "I just want to let you know that you you know really changed my life with the surgery." And uh, to hear that, it, it made me feel great. And that's uh, that's why why we do the things we do here at the University of Washington Medical Center. Thank you. It was really wonderful. That's wonderful. I think we have a video of how you're doing after the surgery. Oh, all right. To have that back pain and then watch my life get smaller and smaller and smaller was just overwhelming. How can I function? And what kind of a life do I have? I don't. And now it's rich. And now it's full of possibility. I live on Orcas in the San Juans, and I live a pretty rough and ready lifestyle. I spent last week mowing my lawn, stacking wood, moving pallets around so I can have this delivery of old hay. I'm going to have a garden this year, a lot of physical work in the beginning to get it set up. There's no way I could have done any of those things two or three years ago. I feel that Dr. Treadway has basically given me my life back. Robin, that sounds like wonderful results. And in addition to the two minimally invasive approach that we did today, we have new exciting technologies that would make minimally invasive surgery even better for patients in the future. Yeah, I think there's a lot of new techniques that are coming down uh, down the road here, and I think it's more important to remember that we need to see the patient, look at their imaging studies, and fit some of the new techniques and the new technology with the patient so we can actually have better outcomes in the future. So I think that's really important to keep in mind. Right. And one newer technique I'd like to mention is that there are ways to do minimally invasive decompression for lumbar stenosis, which doesn't require general anesthesia. We can do it under local anesthesia. Well, Robin, thank you for joining us and sharing your wonderful story. You're most welcome. And Dr. Treadway, thank you for your time here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm Dr. Virini Hillard. Thank you for joining us at Talk Medicine. Please join us in the future.